Welcome to Mechanics of Composite Materials. Today, I have invited a guest speaker that's going to talk to us about good design practices. Uh, I'm introducing you to Chad Forster, who is a Chief Systems Engineer at Virgin Orbit, previously the Chief Engineer for Launcher One Evolution. And he used to be the manager of second stage structures and mechanisms and has extensive experience uh, in structural systems and design. He helped uh, improve the manufacturability and cost of several systems. He worked on various um, design practices that allowed the vehicle to be successful. He also worked at the Aerospace Corporation where he worked a range of problems dealing with composites and other applications. He has a bachelor's degree from Harvey Mudd College and a master's degree in structural engineering from the University of California, San Diego. With that, I would like you to uh, welcome Chad Forster um, and we're going to be basically going through some questions, some thoughts that I would like you to consider as you design composite structures. So with that, let me turn it over to Chad and he can introduce himself even more. Yeah, thanks Vinay for the introduction and uh, thanks everyone for having me today for this uh, short discussion. Uh, Vinay kind of went through my background. You know, I'm a, I guess a mechanical engineer at heart. Uh, Harvey Mudd is a very all around kind of school. So I got my detailed training, I would say in composites and analysis at UC San Diego, a uh, great place to go for, for uh, various kind of structural engineering there uh, in the structures engineering department. So Vinay led, uh, put together these three kind of areas. Vinay, if you don't mind me jumping around, I'd like to actually start with uh, the middle section for the importance of design and analysis verification of composites, or do you want me to kind of stick to the prompt of? Uh, the, this is, uh, I would like you to do what makes sense uh, and uh, incorporating some of your design uh, knowledge and your experience. Yeah, so I guess in general with composites, you know, what I found is, you know, they're they're always a, a a hot solution for a problem and they're not always the right solution. So whenever you're starting a design problem, real really do kind of a a good solid comparison, you know, between the various ways you can complete the design, whether through a metal approach or maybe there's two metal approaches, you know, machined a machine piece, kind of a, maybe a sheet metal piece, and then composites, there might be a couple approaches as well, because there's a variety of different composites out there. You could go with like a chopped fiber compound or a, like a plane weave laminate, or even a plane weave laminate with a core. So there, there's kind of, there's a, there's a bunch of different opportunities when you approach any design. And for composites, make sure you're trading it with a metallic design and you truly understand what a metallic design can give you and what a composite design can give you. And composites may not always win. And uh, you really have to look through kind of the full life cycle of the product, you know, in your design application to really see the value. And for some of the aerospace applications, you know, it's, it's straightforward where you're dealing with high performance applications where you're really trying to save mass and that might realize into lower fuel burn for a plane or a lighter structure for a rocket or, you know, an extremely light structure for a satellite, you know, that just survives launch and then operates on orbit with really low loads. You know, so there's a couple different, you know, I would say high performance design realms in aerospace, but even in those, you don't have, you know, 100% applicability and nor should you of composites. So it's, it's something that you have to really, you know, take a, a fine tooth comb with when you do, do your design trade to make sure you're making a good decision. And then the implica implications of composites, you know, become evident as you do kind of the soup, you know, um, you do the full life cycle, life, life cycle analysis, you know, from starting from, uh, you know, doing the design and evaluation and the manufacturing and the qualification. Uh, what you have to do for acceptance testing, you know, what you have to do in terms of non-destructive evaluation over the course of his life, you know, fielding it to the field for a, an expendable system or fielding it to the field, but also monitoring in the field for a, you know, long-term uh, life system like an airplane. And, uh, 
really also for like the systems that you can inspect, but have a long lifetime, really understanding the long-term kind of degradation that can happen in certain environments. And that might be happening with like a satellite, you know, in some instances where you're operating it for, you know, decades and you're not really able to inspect it. Uh, airplanes you can inspect over decades of use and then rockets, you really, you just, you need to make sure it's as perfect as possible when you launch it, you know, an expendable rocket. And we do have, you know, non-expendable rockets, reusable ones from SpaceX that have composite parts. So people are getting, uh, I would say some data now on reusing composites in those applications. So if I go through this list that kind of Vinay pointed out, uh, really the importance of structural qualification testing for composites, it's a bonded structure, right? There's glue everywhere. It's like, uh, I always tell people composites are like baking. It's, it's very, um, it's very finicky and it's not the same as doing, you know, a process processing with metal, which we've been doing for a long time. And we really have down, we have all these standards and, and, and for certain metal types and, and it's really clear, you know, what to do at, you know, this foundry versus foundry A and foundry B, they're going to be very, very similar things to meet the specification with composites. Since it's glue, and uh, since it's something that you can manipulate pretty easily, that glue is always changing. So like locking down what type of glue you use is super important and going with something that's, uh, if you're trying to do a new design, going with something that's readily available, if you wanna go for cost, that's also, I would say, uh, qualified on the, or has a good data set on the coupon level, you know, doing stuff like short beam shear, or uh, bearing tests, you know, hot wet tests, so like all that kind of, I would say data that's really down at the kind of glue level and the fiber level. So that's the other thing is the fibers are super important too. You know, that's the other part of the baking, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's something to consider for all designs, right? The, the drapability of the fibers and all that stuff. So that all goes into choosing the composite. When you get down to the qualification testing, if you're doing something that is, you know, safety critical, you're gonna want a dedicated qualification article that is as flight-like as you can get. And that that's making sure all the key interfaces are there, all the key loads are dumping in. So if you have a really like complex, uh, let's say tube that you're designing, you know, making sure you hit your critical, you know, uh, bending moment in shear and also making sure that it has all the little features on it that create, you know, constant uh, stress concentrations. And so that's kind of the test like you fly evaluation is making sure you're qualifying something that looks, you know, uh, performs and is manufactured like the flight article. And that could be down to even manufacturing if you're doing a small batch, you know, of some special design, you know, manufacturing the qualification out of article out of that same batch of material that raw material that you're doing all the, the limited, you know, number of flight articles out of. So it's, it's super important. Uh, good instrumentation is a part of that. Um, Uncompensating load cases basically uh, is, is a part of that. And good instrumentation falls down to, you know, placement of strain gauges so that you can correlate a model. And usually when you're approaching a qualification test of a composite structure, whether it's a small structure or a large structure, you're going to have a final model that you're doing analysis on for flight loads. We'll call them flight loads and they could be for plane flight or rocket or, or spacecraft. Flight loads that are coming out of a couple loads analysis. And so you look at those first and you, you look at your margin of safety across the structure and you will, you will be able to kind of determine the key areas of the structure that you need to make sure you test. And that's really going down to the encompassing load cases because the actual way you load up a structure in a test stand, it's not gonna be the same way that you end up seeing load, you know, during a, a flight event, a critical event, a load event. And so making sure you have test loads that envelope your flight loads and really hit those kind of key pinch points in the structure where you might have a high, um, you know, max principal strain, you know, in tension or compression. 
uh, is super important. And so that that's that those are kind of the top three is there when you approach qualification testing, you know, the goal is to hit your right safety factors for your program. You know, there are many standards out there you can reference for what you want to hit there. And you want to make sure it's as flight like as possible and instrumented as as much as possible as well within reason. You know, qualification articles are always going to have more instrumentation than an acceptance article. And you want to make sure that that's kind of your science project that you focus in on so that you have a data set afterwards that you can correlate your final model to. And maybe you make some tweaks to the final model because of that data set. And then when you're running through ATPs later, acceptance tests, you can more easily see issues that might arise, you know, with sensors that are in similar locations that might be showing, you know, different behavior. It'll allow you to kind of address issues you might see in ATP later. So I think I covered that first one. I don't know if any of you have any kind of follow-up questions on that. Yeah, I have a few follow-up questions. I didn't want to interrupt, but uh, let's, let's start with the design analysis process that we talked about. You raised a very important point that has been missed for many, many years. Is that composites come with a lot of baggage. They come with a lot of expense associated with maintaining them over the life of the program due to the number of manufacturing issues that could occur. In, 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 in fact, in addition to that, due to impact damage events that could occur, repairs and things like that. Could you kind of elaborate uh, on that front? Yeah, I'll talk in generalities. You know, this, this information is, uh, you can compile it kind of, you know, looking at the susceptibility of composites to various types of damage. But you, like I said before, you have to monitor the composite kind of throughout its life cycle. It starts with, uh, if you're dealing with like, for instance, pre-preg, pre-impregnated fabric, you know, that stuff needs to be stored at a certain temperature. And it only has a shelf life, even at that low temperature where it's able to be used and cured. So that's the start, right? You receive material, you gotta watch it, you gotta use it within time. And it's not only time, you know, in the freezer, but it's time out of the freezer. And then you have to make sure that it's cured with the right profile, you know, and cured in the right, at the right pressure as well. So all, all of that goes into just manufacturing, getting a, a composite piece, and then making sure you can get it off the tool without damaging it that you can operate with, right? It might have, you know, features you have to add afterwards, but that's kind of your net shape. And so that, that's part of the process is watching that. And that's the, some of the baggage that Vinay's talking about. And then for the actual damage, you know, as you get a piece out, right? I talked about getting it off a tool. You know, composites are lightweight structures. We talked about that. They have thin sections, you know, that are, can be, you know, prone to small impact damage from tools or from someone, you know, stepping on it, you know, as they're working on it or trying to cut it or, or even uh, as you're cutting them, you can get kind of localized, you know, rips if you're not using, for instance, the right manufacturing method, you know, the type of drill bit or the type of routing tool. So all of that's just built in, you know, to the design you have to deal with on the manufacturing side. And your manufacturing processes are protection against that. You know, your, your uh, I would say FOD kind of control processes, tool control processes are part of that to make sure you don't have this damage. But as you go through the, that life cycle, you have to do non-destructive evaluation, you know, to make sure that you don't have damage, you know, occurring at certain key points in the manufacturing life. And that's in manufacturing, like adding features, all the way going through acceptance testing, all the way going through integration, you know, into kind of the, the, uh, the primary structure assembly of the, the larger vehicle and all the way into fielding it, you know, in the field and if you're doing operations. So for instance, like a composite, you know, business jet, you know, you're, you're making sure that you don't see any little indentations or dents, you know, kind of around the OML and the composite like that, because that could be indicative, indicative, indicative of some impact damage and that could mean fiber, you know, and matrix delamination and a kind of a local weak spot that might might be okay for normal flight environments, but if you go through like a critical flight environment, it could 
you know, rip apart, you know, catastrophically. I don't know, Vinay, if I answered your question. Uh, you did in an excellent way. Um, another thing I want to point out is that the point of using composites is that it gives you a, more degrees of freedom that you can adjust to get the best out of them. If you're going to make a lightweight design, may as well take advantage of what you can offer. So since you have a lot of different ply angles that you can select, you have different material systems you can select, you have play. You can put more plies, less plies, different angles. Take advantage of what it can offer. However, keep into consideration that maybe that composite system that you want to use in your program could be difficult to acquire in the future. It's possible that there is uh, situations that we cannot purchase the composite and you may have to switch to a completely different composite. Could you elaborate on that point, um, Chad? Yeah, I kind of mentioned that before. In, um like the resins you know people are always developing different resins and i think i think long term in the composite industry you might have kind of a few key resins that uh end up being your uh, like standard alloys that you'd see in like an aluminum right different flavors of aluminum you got 7075 you got 6061 you got some you know other special stuff like 7050 they all do different things right they all have different things that are part of that kind of metal you know, uh, metal, metallurg metallurgical process. With composites, we've been dealing with them for a long time, but there still is, I would say, room to grow in like the final state of the alloys. And really it's the, the final state of the epoxies and the final state of the cyanesters and final state of, uh, you know, even probably like car carbon, carbon or carbon sick there's probably room for that to standardize. And so you hopefully, you know, as a kind of industry will be less and less susceptible to lines going away. And that's what Vinay is kind of alluding to. And so that might be your epoxy goes away and they just stop producing it for whatever reason. It could be that it's not profitable anymore. It could be that they've got a new product they want everybody to move to. Some of that's out of your control you know, especially if you're a smaller program and you're not, you know, a big giant defense program. And uh, there's so many resin systems out there right now that kind of do the same thing that there's a lot of competition, but that also means that if you switch a resin system, even if it's equivalent, you're still gonna have to redo your kind of like coupon level qualification. You'll probably have to make a few large structures and requalify them. So that's a big cost to a program, right? And it messes up with your manufacturing, flow it puts a lot of non-recurring engineering you know on the on the docket that you didn't plan for and uh that, that's one of the risks and so it's really important when you're starting a program or you're starting a new design to kind of do an assessment of what's an in industry and what's stable and what what programs i would say are anchor customers for certain resins you know that that's that's uh you can you can do your homework and you can kind of figure it out and and that's what you know, I suggest is, is a good way of going about and doing. Uh, the other thing is, there's other things in composites that can kind of wander around and, and change and go away. You know, I, uh, I talked about core, you know, core is, uh, I would say a pretty standard product now. And there's, there's a lot of variety there, but there's so much variety that if you use a specific type of core from a manufacturer, like a big manufacturer like Hexcel, you know, it could go away if it's a very specialized version. And so, all of that kind of plays into the product, you know, you know, you got film adhesive too. That's a whole nother type of thing you have to worry about. And uh, so you probably have all these components in that baking process, right? Your flour, your sugar, you know, your, your, your components of your composite and you have to watch them all. And that, that, that is, that is a big part of the baggage, but the end result is you get this high performing product you know, if, if you need it. And so if you don't need it, that's the thing going back to saying, if you don't need it, don't, don't do it, you know, do something that, you know, meets the need and make it out of metal. Cause like metal is just, it's stable. It's a, it's a stable product and you can get it from a lot of different places, you know, whether it's a machine piece or something that's riveted together and, uh, 
yeah, that's that's kind of it on that on that subject, Vinay. Great. And another consideration is that during flight conditions, your structure could be exposed to high temperatures and composites. When you test it on the ground, it could be at room temperature. But we know that composites can degrade during environmental conditions. Do you want to comment on that point? Yeah, and that kind of gets back to the use case <clears throat> on whether you have something that's expendable or something that's lasting a long time, you know, in a, a variable load environment. So expendable would be like a rocket, lasting a long time in variable loads, you know, in variable conditions would be an aircraft. And then something that has to survive heavy loads kind of at the start of its life and then lower loads on orbit, maybe a spacecraft. Those are all different kind of, uh, you know, you know, uh, use cases and, and, oh, let me see. Wait, jog my memory again. What were you trying to say, Vinay? Say it again. The point is that the testing that you do on the ground oh, yeah. needs to account for the difference between the flight and test. No? Yeah, the environmental condition. So like for, for aircraft, you could see yourself doing a lot of different environmental testing there. Usually you do a lot on the coupon level. You do hot wet testing. Uh, you do kind of room temperature dry testing. Uh, you do even some cold testing, uh, depending on how, on what type of uh, kind of liquids or, or environments the composites are exposed to. And so that, that'll help kind of uh, assess, you know, the, the issues you can, you can encounter on the global scale, but then you get down to the testing, doing testing in the actual flight environments at the actual temperatures is either usually really expensive or sometimes not even feasible. And so you have to kind of make judgment calls and that, that could mean that you're, you know, testing a structure at room temperature to higher loads because you can look at kind of the coupon level data and kind of adjust your allowable. And, and uh, if you go for the higher loads, you can kind of demonstrate capability at the higher loads in a more pristine kind of environment versus like a hot environment. Uh, that's one way. Uh, the, you know, the other way is you can also derate your allowable for those type of environments. And so you basically design around a lower allowable, which means you're gonna carry extra mass in your structure. And that'll give you coverage basically for these kind of environmental extremes. So there's a couple of different ways to skin that cat. Um, it's, uh, it's something you have to be aware of and getting down to the nitty gritty, even when you're doing a test, you know, sometimes you can't really over test the interface you know, because there's some, you know, weird multi-material interface there. So really understanding kind of the, the boundary conditions, the thermal boundary conditions when you're doing a test and trying to replicate that, especially at joints or discontinuities is super important. So if you can do it, do it. Uh, but if you can't, you know, make sure you're, you're derating the allowable or your, um, <clears throat> or you're testing to higher loads to give yourself coverage. Great. Um, well, um, I thank you, Chad Forster, for giving us your insights about the complications composites can bring, but the benefits they can also provide. And also the kinds of things that should be considered during the structural qualification, acceptance testing and design process. And with that, I'd like to open up uh, for some questions uh, and go from